Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. A couple of thunder showers today along with additional humidity. We'll let you know how long those humidity levels will stay on the higher end. Plus, we'll take a sneak peek at that all-important Memorial Day weekend forecast coming up. Crime concerns continue in the Roanoke Valley after another weekend filled with gun violence. What the mayor says you can do to help bring it to an end. And cracking down on crime by focusing on prevention in teens. You don't throw anyone away because I can't tell you and look at you and tell you what your potential is. The success in Danville that's continuing to grow. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. I'm John Carlin. Another weekend filled with gun violence in the Star City and tonight city leaders are asking for your help. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder joins us now live outside of the Roanoke Police Department. So Annie, how are they encouraging people to come forward? Well, John and Lindsay, no arrests have been made in the multiple shootings that happened here in Roanoke over the weekend, but city leaders say it's becoming increasingly hard to address when potential witnesses will not come forward with information. Now, officers responded to two separate shootings, one on Williamson Road and one on Glen Ridge Road for two separate incidents. Again, city leaders on the Gun Violence Prevention Commission say solutions to the problem will not come overnight. Mayor Sherman Lee says he would like to see rewards posted or see more vigils for victims of gun violence violence to encourage the spread of information. Everybody is welcome to the table to come up with an idea to see what we do, but we're continuing to work at it and we're going to continue to do it because that's part of what we do at the council, but we need our citizens to come in and do what they can do. Now, Lee also says the new small grants the city will give out should help other nonprofits, nonprofits and businesses discuss the gun violence. Now, the Roanoke City Police Department is still looking for information about the shootings that happened over the weekend. If you have that, you can reach out to them and choose to remain anonymous. Live in Roanoke tonight, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Over in Danville, the city is working to build up its team combating youth and gang violence at the root. New tonight at 6, 10 News reporter Alexis Davila explains how a few new hires will drastically boost prevention efforts. This new team will be the boots on the ground to build personal connections that could end up saving lives. For three years, Robert David worked with troubled youth on his own in a workforce readiness program. But now to expand it, three prevention workers will start outreach efforts with local agencies and build upon 15 hour youth job trainings. In just three weeks, 14 young people are signed up to work with the new hires and their families. They're there for everything. They're there for when they're celebrating. They're there for when they're down. And really that, that old school mentality of a village raising a child well, we just created a village. Working remotely, each worker will be assigned 13 children at most to develop deeper bonds. And coming up on 10 News tonight at 11, I'll tell you why Danville police say working with families is the holistic approach needed to keep people out of their jails. In Danville, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. And let's switch over to your forecast. A beautiful and hot weekend. Uh, looking a little bit cloudier today, however. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz is joining us now. And Jeff, some thunderstorms are popping up around the region. We're mm -hmm. looking at one of our sky cams here, but uh, we need more rain, don't we? We really do. And some areas are getting some today. Not all areas. So here's a look at the radar, and you'll notice that we have some hit or miss thunder showers. Any storm that has developed is packing a little bit of a punch with gusty winds and also some very heavy rain. We're going to do a couple of uh, checks here on the radar and you'll notice that Halifax County seeing some very heavy rain in uh, spots and then you also notice southern parts of Charlotte County right along Highway 15 seeing some heavier downpours and then we also have heavier rain really uh, extending from Nelson County near Lovingston over towards Rockbridge County in areas near Buena Vista and Lexington up north into areas very close to Fairfield and Rafine and then even up north into Highland County near Monterey and Bluegrass we're seeing some rain but the heaviest rain situated right now in Rockbridge County in areas very close to Lexington that's where you are where we are dealing with rainfall rates of around two and a half inches per hour, but at least this uh, activity is moving from the northwest to the southeast at a clip of around about 30 miles per hour. Now, a look at Memorial Day weekend. We're going to have rain to track on Friday and Saturday, Sunday, and actually Memorial Day itself look drier, and we're not as warm this weekend as last weekend. We'll show you the numbers coming up in just a bit. Lindsay.
All right, thank you, Jeff. A local favorite will not reopen after shutting down due to COVID-19. In a statement, the family who owns the Home Place restaurant called, called it an emotional decision. The Home Place announced it will stay shut down after nearly 40 years in business. Well, tonight is your chance to give input on Roanoke's proposed 2022 budget, totaling more than $300 million. While there are no new taxes, there are some proposed increased fees. The budget is about $307 million, nearly $10 million more than the previous year. The stormwater utility fee is set to increase from $5.40 a month to $9.60 a month over the next five years. The overall budget is set to fund education, safety, and infrastructure among others. The public hearing starts at 7 and is virtual for the public. The budget will be adopted on June the 21st. The town of Blacksburg wants to hear from you as it works toward creating affordable housing. Over the next six weeks, the town is asking for your input on what kind of homes you want to see, the incentives available, and how to fund it. This is the final step that you can give your input for. The link to do so is on our website. Just log on to WSLS.com. Construction has begun on a new state-of-the-art facility for the Blacksburg Police Department. The police station and a 300-space parking garage will be at the corner of Clay and Church Streets near the new Midtown development. This project's been in the works for two years now, but the town identified a need for a new police station long before that. The original building is from the 80s, and the department's outgrown it. The new building just gives them the technology and the space and the um, designs for a modern police department to take them long into the future. The cost of the department and the garage is just over $26 million. Construction should be finished next spring. Well, breaking down the vaccination debate with your kids. Any of our kids under 18, we'll make that decision for them. Where many parents draw the line in letting their kids decide. And taking their craft on the road, the new way people can experience art in the Lynchburg area without going downtown. The Lynchburg Local Arts Center is working to give everyone access to their craft. Academy in Motion, a new mobile classroom, is designed to do just that. The bus gives people in rural areas opportunities that they would get at the Academy downtown. The idea was born, of course, out of the pandemic will really be able to service our community in a way that we've never been able to reach them before. Transportation is a common barrier that we find in the community and of course there's always financial barriers and things like that or even with COVID over the past year we've seen how arts are usually the first thing to get cut in a time of crisis. The arts will be offered at community centers, senior living facilities, <coughs> public spaces, detention centers and more. 2021 marks 60 years of the Piedmont Arts in Martinsville. The nonprofit art museum was created with the goal of offering the community education as well as performing and visual arts. To celebrate its anniversary, the museum is hosting a jubilee on its official anniversary, and that's on June 11th. There will be live music, food, and drinks. Tickets are $60. You can find those on the museum's website. Deciding what's right for your family can be a difficult decision. What our local health experts are doing to ease that debate, especially when it comes to getting your kids vaccinated. And you are looking at a live picture from our Virginia Tech Skycam overlooking Blacksburg. And you'll notice that we do have some clouds around, maybe some breaks of sunshine here or there. But for the most part, we've been mostly cloudy this afternoon with some pop up showers and a couple of thunderstorms. We'll let you know how long we're going to stay on the unsettled side coming up. With teenagers now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine, many families are debating if they should get the shot for their kids. But it may not be one you both agree on. 10 News reporter Courtney Lockie is working for you to find out who makes the final decision. As soon as the COVID-19 vaccine was approved for kids 12 and up, many parents jumped at the opportunity. My daughter is 13. As soon as it was approved for 12 to 15 year olds, she, she got vaccinated. For Dr. Noelle Bissell and her teen, the decision to roll up their sleeves was personal. It's sparking discussion among Virginia families as parents ultimately have the right to make medical decisions for their kids. Being that mine is five, I would definitely say that's my choice. While Ashlyn Dentler's daughter isn't quite old enough yet to get the shot, it may be a decision she'll 
she'll have to face soon. Health officials say come fall, the vaccine could be offered to kids two and up. If she was 10 and older, I would definitely give her the opportunity to make that decision. I would sit down and have a conversation with them about it and ask them did they understand, and if they understand, I would definitely give them the resources for that. For other parents like Red Sales, it's mom and dad know best. We just didn't think it was a healthy choice for our children, and plus they're too small to make that own, their own decision. Their mind's still developing. They can't reason the way we do. Meanwhile, health experts say they're still trying to reason with parents. There's absolutely no evidence that these vaccines um, have any interference with puberty, with hormones, with fertility or anything. Dr. Bissell recommends sitting down with your pediatrician with your kids and making an educated decision together. In Lynchburg, Courtney Lockheed, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. More of us are staying dry right now than getting wet, but if you're getting wet, you're getting very wet as these storms are producing torrential downpours right now as all of this is moving to the southeast anywhere between 20 and 30 miles per hour. First stop will take us into extreme southern parts of Charlotte County right along Highway 15, also in other parts of Halifax County right along Highway 92, Highway 58, seeing some heavier downpours in areas just to the north and also to the east of South Boston. These cells will be leaving the viewing area here within about the next 30 minutes or so, but it is raining raining cats and dogs right now in Lexington up in Rockridge County, also into Buena Vista, although the rain in Buena Vista may actually get a little heavier over the next five minutes or so. Very wet go of it right now along Highway 60, Highway 11, Interstate 64, and Interstate 81. There will be ponding of water on area roads, and we are seeing gusts in excess of 30 to 40 miles per hour in those cells. Now, patchy fog may develop a little bit later tonight as the activity winds down. Tuesday, it looks like we're going to have a, another chance for some hit or miss thunder showers developing as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. And then as we head into the day Wednesday, we are looking at a day Wednesday where we start out dry with sunshine, but like clockwork, we're going to have more scattered showers and thunderstorms developing during the heating of the day. So for the next couple of days, we're for the most part dry in the morning, but as, you, as soon as you head beyond lunchtime, that's when the chance for some beneficial rain and unfortunately even some stronger thunderstorms will indeed increase for us. The rain coverage here as we head into the rest of today will be scattered into the evening, okay? So not everybody gets wet, okay? But those that do will see very heavy rain for a short period of time. Now what we're tracking here is another disturbance headed our way Friday into Saturday. So as we look ahead to Memorial Day weekend, it looks like Friday and Saturday will be wetter than Sunday and Monday. We're going to have this front move through here during the first part of the holiday weekend. Second part of the holiday weekend looks to be a little bit drier. And that, of course, is Sunday into Memorial Day itself. Temperatures here at 617, 72 in Hot Springs, 80 Lynchburg, 85 in Danville, 86 Martinsville. You're in the upper 70s, Blacksburg, and also into Wisconsin. The record heat watch is on for Wednesday. I don't think we're going to get there, but it cannot be ruled out. I think we're going to get within about maybe a degree to about four degrees away from these record highs as we're forecasting a high of 86 in Blacksburg Wednesday, 88 Covington, 91 Roanoke, 92 Lynchburg and 92 in Danville. I think Lynchburg, your record watch will need to be watched very, very closely as you're going to come within a degree of perhaps breaking that record high. Everybody else will be between about three to four degrees away from breaking record high. So again, it is uh, certainly going to turn hot again for us here over the next 48 hours or so, only to cool down big time by the holiday weekend. Going to have some evening thunder showers around, and then we're going to have some fog developing after that. Overnight lows tonight, 60 to 66. Three days zone by zone forecast showing hit or miss thunder showers Tuesday and Wednesday in the NRV. Lower chances on Thursday. For the highlands, you're in the 80s here for the next couple of days with Wednesday and Thursday looking hotter than Tuesday. And south side, you're in the 80s Tuesday, low to mid 90s Wednesday and Thursday. For Lynchburg, may have some afternoon and early evening thunder showers to dodge Tuesday and Wednesday, although I'm thinking that there's a higher threat to the west of you, especially as we head into tomorrow. Thursday dry with the rain chances again wrapping up. Friday into Saturday, and then for the Roanoke Valley, your hottest days will come Wednesday and Thursday with highs near 80. I should say with highs near 90. Then we fall to near 80 on Friday, and then the 70s return this holiday weekend. Abby. All right, Jeff, we'll hear from Lefty after his historic win at the Ocean Course yesterday. And the Knights have a new head football coach who is no stranger to football here in the Valley. Sports is next. Tonight on 10 News at 7, every time this rings, it seems like an automated voice is on the other end. 
Tonight, we're working for you to explain how to reduce the number of robocalls and protect yourself from scammers. That and more coming up tonight on 10 News at 7. All right, a new era is underway for Cave Spring football. The school introduced their next football coach this afternoon. Someone who knows the area quite well and vice versa. Athletic Director John Hartness introduced Nick Leff, which has the next head coach. If that name sounds familiar, it should. The 31-year-old is a former Salem Spartans quarterback who went on to play at UVA Wise. In the coaching ranks, he's made stops at Graham, Taswell, and most recently, William Fleming as an assistant coach. Left, which said he's looking forward to getting started and bringing his dad Jeff along to help with the program. This is something I've wanted to do my whole life as far as being a head football coach. Um, you know, it's, it's in my pedigree. My father's a coach. My grandfather was a coach. So, uh, quite frankly, I don't know if I can do anything else. Um, but uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, every, every student athlete wants the opportunity to be successful, and that's what we're going to try to do here. Uh, we're going to do it with a, a winning attitude. Um, and just trying to get these guys to believe and invest in the process of, what we're, of how we're going to attack this and, uh, again, put this uh, program back in a place where we are consistently looking at winning games. All right, more first and 10 news. The perennial Class 2 region power Glenver puts more players into the college ranks. Today at the Highlanders Fieldhouse, more Glenver talent celebrating a move to the next level. Blake Custer signed with Emory and Henry today, while Cody Francisco and Keith Couch both committed to the Panthers of Ferrum College, a trio that helped the Highlanders the past few seasons be playoff bound, now prepped to continue their careers. Coach Clifford, he put us through the ringer mentally and physically, and I feel like I'm ready to go up there. I would never dream of like playing football. I've always been a basketball guy. Coach Clifford yeah, brought the love to me, and he's a great coach. I can't speak enough about him and the coaching staff at Glenver. It's just, it's amazing. It's a blessing from God, man, honestly. I picked them. Like, they're moving D2. I was looking forward to that. Um, hopefully I can get some more scholarship money. Um, and they just hired Mike Gentry, like I said before, so that was a big part of it. Indeed. Meantime, NCAA softball has reached the Super Regional round of 16, eight best of three series. Eight winners go to the College Softball World Series, and the Hokies in one of those series at UCLA Thursday night game one. NBA playoff offerings tonight. And Julio Jones live on TV today said, I'm out of there, uh, referring to Atlanta. So clearly he wants to be traded. That is amazing. I'm going to go back and watch that slow motion on my desk. Nightly <laughs> News is coming up next. We'll see you back here at 7.